I'm about to show you how we covered these ordinary flower boxes that were very practical, made of green vinyl, and not very decorative, with the texture that looks like real tree bark. This craft was amazingly easy to do, but there are a couple of tricks we're going to share with you to get this realistic wood texture. We're going to make this texture with ordinary caulk. Here's a close-up of one of the boxes. Because it's many years old, there are lots of tiny scratches that will help hold the texture to the surface, but if the boxes were new, we would have given them a light sanding. Here's the brand of sealant we used. Most likely any good caulk would work, but we chose DAP Dynaflex Ultra because we could find it locally at Home Depot, and we love the idea of working with the color brown. Put the caulk into a caulk gun and cut off the tip. Begin drawing lines on your box to simulate the grain of wood. The lines can be wavy, but should go mostly in the same direction, with some diagonals thrown in here and there, which we'll show you later. If you set your caulk gun down, be sure to place it on a putty knife blade, because it will continue to flow, and you can use every drop if you plan ahead. For the knot holes, and you really should have some knot holes, think about the shape of the human eye. Make a circle with lines curving around it, and what we'll do is we'll make this look even more real with chalk paint later. You can make your bark texture by drawing lines on your box like this, or you can put the caulk on with a putty knife and spread it on the surface just like peanut butter. You can make thick lines and thin lines and lines that wobble like earthworms, like this one. We are spreading the caulk with a putty knife. We'll want to try and cover every part of the flower box that will show. We did texture most heavily on the front and the top rims and just inside the opening because that's what you're going to see on our boxes. But we put very little caulk on the sides and the back and none at all on the bottom. For our purposes, it took two tubes of caulk to do these three boxes. Now to make the bark texture on the caulk, use a plastic fork and just rake it over the caulk lines following the direction of the grain and circling around any knot holes. It's amazing the amount of textures you can make with an ordinary plastic fork. You can drag it, you can scratch with it, you can make crisscross, cross hatching, you can press it into the caulk and dab up and down to create a bumpy texture too. In the back of your mind, think about maintaining a grain to the design. Either horizontal for like flower boxes or maybe up and down for designs that you want to make look like a, the stump of a tree. You can add a few diagonals or even a few zigzags for effect, but the grain is what's going to make it look most real. Here we go again, spreading the caulk with a putty knife, and then we're going to use our fork every which way but loose to make the bark texture. After the first layer of caulk, we're going to build up the surface over and over again, and the higher we dare go on the details, the more dramatic and amazing this bark is going to look. Here we are using the back of the fork, pouncing up and down, doing random textures to blend in the shiny caulk. This caulk does not have a tendency to drip or slump, and it sets up so fast that we can build up the texture to almost half an inch in small peaks, and then we can give the box a quarter turn and start working on the rim. We want a lot of texture on these rims because that will really make this look like it was made of real tree bark. Just look at this hard-working fork. It went through three boxes with two tubes of caulk. So we gave it a little rest here and we used this plastic knife and we're just making some diagonal cuts. And they're flatter, less detailed than the fork lines would make and that just adds that much more random quality to this bark. This caulk will set and feel dry to the touch in a few hours, but if you let your caulk cure for several days before you paint it, it will still feel a little bit spongy, but the paint will solidify the surface and make it very durable. The boxes are painted primarily brown with highlights and gray. Here and there we added a touch of moss, green, and faded yellow. We used chalk paints and a pan of fireplace ashes, so let's get started. 
Did I really say to mix ashes into paint? Yes, ashes brushed into wet paint can make very natural textures. We'll put a link at the end of this video for how we make realistic rust effects with ashes too, but for the bark, step one, we're going to paint everything a medium brown using chalk paint. And while the paint is still wet, we're going to dip a paintbrush into a pan of ashes and powder the surface. You can get your ashes from a barbecue pit or a fireplace or a wood stove. Any ashes will do. Give it a try. So start with a coat of chalk paint, or if you like, you can use Mod Podge. Brush it on and then follow it with a heavy coat of ash. Some of the ash will drop off, but that's fine. But most of the ash will bond so well with the chalk paint or the Mod Podge that even a heavy rain will not wash it off. When the brown paint in the Mod Podge was dry with the ashes, we used a small paintbrush to make gray highlights on the ridges of the bark. It's a light gray. It almost looks white, but it's not. And we also used a touch of moss green, followed by a just a bit more of a light gray. With an even smaller paintbrush, we added a shadow in soft black under most of the ridges and in the center of the knot holes. All of this makes that 3D texture of the bark more pronounced. Here and there, we used a muted yellow over the brown. You can see it a little bit there on the right. We didn't use a lot of that, but that was just to add a little variation in the color. But that was it. This tough finish doesn't demand that you use a sealer. You could scrape it off if you used a putty knife and you worked really hard at it, but for the most part, this texture will hold up in rainy weather. We had a big rainstorm after we put this these boxes together and it didn't phase the surface at all, but we will bring them in for winter just to make sure they look good for many years. There are many great paint brands that you could use. We used Waverly Inspirations paint, and what we did was put together some charts to show you the colors that we think are equivalent to the colors that we used for this project. Don't you love the names of paint colors like Moonstone Ring, Clara's Cape. I have to say Rust-Oleum probably wins the contest on paint names. Now you're ready to plant those boxes. And we found what was fun was to gather sticks and twigs from our yard and put them in with the flowers to help prop them up a bit and they go great with this texture. Well, until next time, see you later. Be inspirational. Be wonderful. Be surprising. Be sweet. Be creative. Be astounding. Be all these things and more at SteffiMcCarthy.com.